today we're going to be doing a repair on this Humidity S3 Pro smartphone and you can see that this is the S3 Pro just go on their website and you can verify that the phone is matching what we have anyhow so um, let's get started here the very first thing is you're going to need proper tools for this job uh, these are some of the tools I'm using here. This suction cup, these two are like plastic picks. You can use a pick for a guitar if you have also. Uh, they also use some uh, playing cards like gambling cards. And then here is two sets of screwdrivers here. You have flathead and Phillips head. Then you have another plastic pick tool here. You're gonna need a SIM card ejector tool here. So I just got this here. I can throw the link in this description down below and you can also purchase a precision knife set we will be using one of these uh, for the job and maybe a nice uh, microfiber cloth here and uh, you also probably need one of these too this is a multimeter um, you know I can throw a link in the description for this one as well and you, also you're gonna need maybe one of these too this is a heating gun here you guys uh, you can use a hair blower but I you know prefer a heating gun this is an older model it's about 15 year old but you know I have a link in the description below for some newer ones that you can use and last but not least uh, you're gonna need a thermal paste here because we are removing the uh, motherboard uh, so I have this thermal paste link in the description below um, so very first step after you have all these required tools is you want to start off by making sure you have a clean work surface here uh, and uh, second step is to start heating up the um, perimeter of the back side of the phone uh, so like this here. now I'm using the lowest power setting number one and I'm gonna go around maybe five times here to kind of get it warm and then after the fifth time I'm just going to focus on just this bottom half so then I'm just going to go another four times here like one two three right number four so I do that four or five more times so I can get this really hot okay and then afterwards uh, you use the suction tool that's gonna be pretty warm you know so you wanna make sure you don't burn yourself and I use this like this and then I simply just put my cloth in this uh, key ring so I don't burn my hand you see and then you're gonna to start to pull up you're gonna to start to pull up on this bottom corner here but the trick is as you're pulling up on this bottom corner you're also at the same time going to be inserting this pick so you'll be doing both of these at the same time it's kinda of hard for me I only have one hand so maybe you can see I can hold it like this okay and so as you're pulling up okay you see and you're going to be using a tool like this to be basically coming down at the same time okay so same time Okay, you want to pull up quite hard uh, sometimes this may come off you know as you're pulling it and you may have to reheat it again and again but eventually you'll get it now once you get the tool inserted this covers already off by the way so I'm just gonna show you for example but once you have this off basically um, you're going to want to uh, stick the tool inside and um, that's going to be like your placeholder see? so I'll show you examples here I have here like this right so you'll have this then the next thing you want to do is grab your second tool and stick it in here okay and as you're as you're pulling this you're still pulling this then you use this first tool to just slide okay you're going to slide this around here and this tool is the second tool is, is still going to be holding this corner so it will not seal back up that's the purpose of having two tools okay so once you get that then 
you want to go ahead and break the edges up to here and up to here. Then you can simply just remove this and put this in the middle like so. And then you'll be able to just peel it back. Now be careful when you're peeling this back because there's a ribbon here. You see that ribbon? That goes to the fingerprint sensor. So if you just pull this very fast, you're going to tear this apart. And then you have to buy a new back cover and uh, fingerprint sensor cable. So once you get that, you can just peel this off. And then afterwards, you know, you're going to use your screwdriver here. And you're simply going to remove, you know, how many screws here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight of these Phillips screws you'll remove. This is the cover that's covering the motherboard. And then the next thing you want to do is remove here another six screws. I think there's one, two, three, four, yeah, six screws. You can remove this too if you want to, but uh, it's up to you. I just removed the top part only because that's the part I'm going to be working on. And then also, you don't forget that um, once you remove this, then you can remove this cable and this whole thing will kind of just come off. And then afterwards, the volume uh, and power button combination is right here. There's a little retaining clip you can remove, like so. So you can remove that clip and just remember how that goes back on. And you can take off both of these buttons here. Uh, and then afterwards, there's a tiny strip behind here. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a tiny little strip here. You can see as I'm pulling that, see that thing that's moving? That is your volume and power combination strip. Now, in order to remove that from here, you need to remove the motherboard because that's pressed onto the output leads that is connected to this. Uh, volume and power combination strip so I'll give you pictures I'll show you some examples with these removed how they look like and then I'll tell you what I find out is the problem and then I will show you how I fix the problem and then I'll prove to you that the phone is going to work again okay thank you very much Okay, and so the root cause for the failure of the power button, as you can see here from what I found out, uh, is a simple case of uh, corrosion buildup um, between the two uh, contacting surfaces within uh, the volume and power button combination strip. Uh, now, as you can see, I peeled back the outer layer of this combination strip and uh, there are two copper contacting surfaces uh, which are linked to um, two of the um, uh, output leads here and all of these output leads would be uh, pressed onto the um, motherboard of the uh, smartphone and uh, basically, uh, you know, um, it, it, the phone will sense, you know, um, a pull-up switch code. Basically, you know, as you push the switch, uh, then uh, it'll recognize that the uh, connection uh, will be made uh, continuous and therefore, um, you know, will carry out the function of the switch. So, in this case, the power switch... Um, Corrosion buildup between the contacts. Simple solution for this. I use uh, a product called uh, Mother's uh, Metal Polish. Uh, I'll link a description uh, below. You can find the link and just click on it. Now I uh, use this uh, very fine blade to peel off the outer layer. And I use a Q-tip to basically dip into the uh, Mother's Metal Polish. And this polishes uh, all types of metal. And it also removes all of the corrosion. And so I use the Q-tip and then I basically just polish the surfaces of uh, these two contacting surfaces you can see here. And after that I use another Q-tip to clean it up and uh, now it's making uh, great contact. Uh, like brand new again basically. So I have no doubt that this power switch will work again. So that's the remedy to this problem, you guys, and I hope you find what you're watching useful. 
Yeah, so the way I test this switch is I do a continuity test. Basically, I hook up uh, two leads on um, where I think the power button is uh, going to, and when I push on down on the switch, um, it will uh, make a continuous connection. Right now, you can see it's uh, um, the connection is fully open, which means that there is no connection being made. But as I push this down, you should see that that one should change. So it would be kind of hard for me to do it. But if you just give me a second, I can try. Okay, I'm pushing it here. And yeah, you can see that the number... Kind of hard to see because I have one hand, but... Okay, I'm pushing it. Okay, you can see that the number reset, so it is making contact now. Therefore, the switch is working. And, uh, and you can switch these leads. I can do like this, say these two. I already figured out which one these two belong to. And um, I wrote it all down here, so I have basically figured it out here, which buttons. And uh, I'm actually wrong. This one would be number... Three and two. So that's how I figure this out, you know, is I just, you know, do by testing and eventually I will figure out how everything works. Thank you very much, you guys, and I hope you find this video helpful. Alright, so this is the moment of truth. I got everything uh, hooked back up here. And as you can see, I got the switch put back in place. And um, everything is screwed back in, so let's give it a shot and see how it does here. Here's the power button. Let's see, we'll hold that. Oh, and it works. I am quite uh, impressed that I did a good job here. You guys. So, uh, yeah, it, it looks like it is working. And let's just keep continuing to see. Okay, it took me to my home page here, and I gotta go ahead and put that in there. All right, and we can see. Oh, look at that. That's how I like it, nice and crisp. See that? Look at that. Bam, 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 bam. You see that? That's how I like it. And does it power off? Oh, sweet. Let's try again here. Okay, very good here. So, it uh, looks like the job is complete and we just need to put everything back and when you're putting it back, you're going to heat it back up basically and then just kind of press on it and let it dry and that should be the end of this uh, repair thank you for watching please rate and subscribe bye